Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial will show you how to paint a tree frog on an 11 by 14 inch canvas that I have painted black. So this tutorial I'm using a traceable of the composition of the frog and the leaf. Um, certainly optional, but I'm not going to demonstrate how to draw the frog in this tutorial. If you are going to hand draw this, um, I would suggest using like a white chalk pencil and starting with the, the tree piece that's kind of going at a curve towards the bottom of the canvas. And then you can um, slowly sketch out your frog. So I would start at the top of the frog like with the eyes and the, just kind of sketch like the head and the legs. I would do like he's got two oval eyes with like a small oval in the center and then sketch the top part of him. There's a curve that goes above the eyes and then just pay attention to like the curves. This curves down over on the left and he's got his legs that um, touch the, the tree trunk. Um, so this is a, a white chalk pencil and it shows up on the black part of the canvas. Um, if you are using the traceable, that is a traceable that I provide for this tutorial. You could download that and that sheet is printed out on two pieces of paper. So you just print it out, tape it together, and you're going to kind of like center it on the canvas. The design is slightly smaller than the 11 by 14, but that's to save you paper. So you're printing it on two sheets of paper and not uh, four. And the this is white graphite paper so basically you stick that below the design and trace and those um, the white lines are from the graphite paper so um, the white graphite paper can be found on Amazon I've linked that to this tutorial if you want to know where to find it um, you could also like rub white chalk on the back of the template and then trace on front um, like a piece of regular white chalk and, or you can do like white colored pencil on the back of it so there's a couple ways to do that. So once you have the design of the frog composition onto your canvas we're going to go ahead and get started with the painting part. So I used two different greens for this. I used Brilliant Yellow Green and Hooker's Green Hue Permanent so that light, I'm going to call it light green and dark green. And I use titanium white because this is a black canvas painting. Um, the white is going to help us with getting those colors to be opaque and bright. And this is a number four round brush that you see me dipping in the water. And I'm going to just pitch my fingers on these bristles and that'll gather your bristles, bristles together to get to kind of a point. So I'm going to grab brilliant yellow green and some titanium white. Twist the brush to get that paint right there on the tip. I'm going to start above his eye. So I'm going to call these contouring strokes because there's a lot of curves in this frog. So I'm just going to let the strokes kind of go in the direction of the curve. So this one's going around his eye. And this frog has a lot of different greens in here. So I'm going to show off his greens by grabbing some of that darker green and letting that darker green kind of mix with this lighter green. So over here on the right, I'm going to go around this eye. I'm going to let that darker green kind of mix with that white and lighter green. Goes around both of those eyes. And I'm just blending my greens together, but not over blend. So we have kind of a, like a different fade of some darks and lights. I'm going to paint above his mouth. So this is a curve for his mouth. I'm going to stay above that curve because below that curve is going to be white. So I'm just grabbing, when I go to reload, I'll grab the light green and then another time I gr might grab the darker green. And I'm just gently blending those colors together to create some different variations of green on that frog. So I'll go ahead and start doing the back to the left of his left eye. Curved strokes, letting those colors just kind of blend together. It should be showing up bright on your black canvas background. Um, 
brilliant yellow green if you're using this brand of paint is a very opaque and bright color and will show up bright against a dark background um, if you're using a different paint and it's not showing up bright I would recommend um, adding more white into your color so like when you're loading your brush double load it in the white and your color the white is going to allow it to show up bright against the dark background and we're just going to continue down the legs I'm going to leave the toes unpainted right now because those are going to be like a reddish orange color so I'm gonna I painted the legs but I stopped when I got to the toe area um, you want to kind of pay attention to contrast so this leg is touching his back leg and if we want our back leg to stand out we want to either use a lighter or a darker color so I'm going to grab white to make this a little bit lighter and then I can grab some darker green because this part right here if it's darker it'll still stand out from the leg next to it I'm going to do the same thing to this leg, again curving strokes, and then that leg is also next to the, the, the front leg, so I made that one kind of brighter, but then down here it kind of made it a little bit darker with that green, just gently mixing it together, and that'll create your color variation in that frog, it kind of makes it fun and interesting, versus if we just painted him a solid color with out mixing greens together. We're going to go ahead and introduce the color phthalo blue to our palette and we'll be painting um, his belly area so everything under the mouth white. I forgot a spot right here so I'm going to grab my green again and paint this spot right here because I did say everything above the mouth. forgot that little curved spot right there. So you want to go ahead, rinse your brush off and dry, get all that green off because um, there's no green in like the belly area. We want it, to, we want to start with pure titanium white. So load your brush in a good amount of that white. And again, we're going to do these contouring strokes. So everything right here is white and I'm kind of painting in a curved direction. Over here on the left, it curves the opposite way. It kind of meets in the center. I'll outline that bottom part of his mouth and just kind of drag it kind of diagonally down. I'll move my hand here in a second to see what I did. So just basically painted that part white at the top. Right here we have a curve. It curves down. There's another curve right here. So just kind of outline your curve and then kind of paint. We have, uh, we need to go around that toe. So this one curves this way. Um, and then I can kind of start doing the left part of it. So outlining it right here, outline. Over here on the left, we'll be adding some blue in there. But for now, I just want to kind of paint all of this in white but paying attention to really the direction of the strokes right here I'm just going to curve this way so basically all of this is painted white then we're going to load the tip of our brush in phthalo blue I'm going to call this blue from now on without rinsing the brush so there is still white on my brush and I just kind of mixed the white with blue on my palette twisted the brush and we're going to go ahead and outline this far left part. We want to create some shadowy area right here. Right now that white that was painted on there is still wet. It's going to kind of blend with it. But we're going to do some um, blending on purpose here. So I made like a curved sort of blue area. But then I'm going to drag it. I'm going to grab some more white on here. Going to drag it like this, doing curved strokes going this way, dragging that blue into the reason why I loaded my brush and some more white in there because that titanium white helps with the blending. Blue is a very strong color, 
So too much blue and it'll get very, very dark. We just want to use this blue as like shading and shadowing, but it should be for the most part white. We did the same thing over on the right, just kind of very gently outline the far right part of it and then went back and just did some curved strokes. You don't want to over blend this just very gently. If you need to go back and add more white to your brush and just kind of go back. And by doing that blue also gives it, makes it look like he's got some wrinkles the way he's sitting. Um, so if you need to go back in with some more white because it turned too blue, you can always just go grab some white and do some more like curved strokes in the center. That white really helps to blend. But I'm going to leave this not um, over blend it. So just kind of leave it like that. Um, there's blue and they're white and they're not like blending together all the way. And what I'm doing next is optional, but if you feel like you need to add a second coat or just a few more strokes of the green um, in some areas of your frog. So at this point that paint might have dried and might have gotten darker uh, But adding a second coat in there will ensure that it's going to be nice and bright So I'm just taking my lighter green and just kind of going back over what I painted But I still I don't want to lose my lights and darks in there So I might have to double load my brush again in that light green and the darker green going back over his arm area I can grab some white and maybe um, kind of highlight it. So right here, that white and the green made that um, top part kind of brighter on the left. Same thing with right here. I'm just kind of going back over with a second coat, but I'm not repainting everything I did. Just kind of brightening up some of my limbs and the far left part of his head, kind of over his eye. Over here, I'm kind of brightening up the right part of his limb. Same with right here, but not losing that dark shadowy area. And I'll grab some of my darker green and add that in there as a second coat where that darker part should be. So all the inner parts of the limbs have the darker green. I'm going to add a little bit of darker green to the top part above his mouth. Just kind of blend that in. And that should be good. We don't, we shouldn't need a third coat. It should be nice and bright and have good coverage against all that black background. So we're going to go ahead and load our palette with Pyrrol Red and Primary Yellow. I'm going to call this Red and Yellow. So we have red in the eyes and we're going to use the red and yellow for the, the toes and add some texture with some yellow later. So let's start with the eye. Um, basically, just make sure your brush is all cleaned and rinsed. Pinch the bristles if you need to because this is a small area. Um, basically, we're just going to paint this oval. So you can do two different things. You can paint the oval just solid red, wait for that to dry, and then do your little black pupil in the center. Um, or you can leave a black um, opening like I did to where that center part of the eye will be. And so you did that red eye. And then we're gonna do the eye over here on the right. So this one is very close to the side. Another oval. Again, I'm just gonna kind of leave, I'm gonna leave all of the far right part open. You can see how that turned out. So um, it's not a full oval of red. There's an opening of black on the right. Then we're gonna paint his toes. So I basically just mixed red and yellow together to make an orangish red and we're going to paint the toes. So I want to say something about this red. Pyrrol red tends to be an opaque red that has good coverage against black. If you're not using this exact kind of red or whatever red you're using isn't showing up um, bright against the black, I would recommend painting the toes and the eyes white first, waiting for the white to dry, and then going back and painting. Um, I would do that for the eyes. The toes, it may not be necessary because um, it's okay if the toes are a little bit translucent, um, but the eyes should be really bright. Um, so to get those bright eyes, you may want need to paint a layer of white first and wait for the white to dry and then paint your red over it. 
So for the toes, basically just painting that shape in. It's that red and yellow kind of mixed together. Um, you can mix it on the canvas or you can just uh, mix it on your palette. So just painting each of those shapes in. So I'm basically just outlining or painting in that circle and then there's like a line that it attaches to the green part of the leg. If you want the toes to be a little bit brighter or give them some highlight, we can use some of this, some of the titanium white here. In fact, I'm going to demonstrate that. So just load the tip of your brush in a little bit of white, kind of drag it out on the palette a little bit, and then basically kind of go over your toes again with the white. You don't want to cover it all the way. Just add a few little um, strokes of white in there. Just kind of gently blend it in. That will help get some brightness in the toes, but we don't want to cover all of that with the white. Just a few little strokes in there, gently blending, but not over blending. We still have some darks in there as well. Then before the orange red toes dry, I'm going to drag some green down into the toes. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to rinse the brush dry, grab my light green color, and very, very subtly kind of drag it down. You see where that like dark area is? There's like a gap where I started my red and stopped the green. I'm going to close that gap by dragging that light green down into the red area. It might blend with the red a little bit. It may even turn kind of brown, but don't over blend it. Just kind of drag it down in there and we don't have any gaps between the legs and the toes anymore. Next, we're going to add some texture to this frog. We're going to do a lot of um, little dots in different places. So rinse the brush dry and load the tip of your four round brush in some titanium white. So we're going to add little white dots to the legs and the belly area. So we're just gonna add like little clusters of dots kind of over here towards the bottom. There's not, they're not going all over the frog. They're kind of clustered in some areas, but not everywhere. So I did a cluster of dots, the top of his left limb towards the bottom of towards his toes over here on his right one towards the bottom. Over here, I do some clusters of dots on his knees. So just little tiny clusters of dots. Over here, maybe there's some above his mouth. Just add some texture and interest to our frog. Lots of little dots in the belly area. So I'm just going to add some clusters of dots over here in the lower right area. And here in the bottom, little tiny dots. So you're loading that white just on the tip of the brush. And some of these white dots might not have a lot of contrast, but they still provide texture, especially where that white is on his belly. It's not going to have a lot of texture or a lot of contrast. Um, I'm not doing a lot on the blue area because I don't want um, to lose kind of that shadowy part. Next, we're going to use, I'm going to use a paint pen for this. If you don't have a black paint pen, um, you can do this with a liner brush. So get your smallest paint brush that you have and load it in Mars black paint. So black paint. Basically, we're going to do the mouth, um, assuming this is dry. So if this is wet for you, wait for this to dry and then come back to this step. But basically, we're going to outline where his mouth is. So there's that curvy line between the the green and the white and we just did the division line for his mouth and then I'm going to do kind of his wrinkle line so this one um, they outline the far right part of it just kind of loosely outlining that and then there's some lines that kind of go inside of it as well I'm gonna make this mouth a little bit darker so um, not darker but the line a little bit thicker so I went back over there with a second layer making that thicker we can use the paint pen for the eyes. So you can do the black pupil part of the eyes. The eye over here on the right goes um, kind of 
all the way to the side. This one, my red wasn't dry completely with this one, so I tried to do the center part of it, but it kept catching some of that red. So I'm going to have to wait for this red to dry a little bit longer. And also I want to do, I'm going to do a second coat of red over this to make it a little bit brighter. So I did that for now, but I'll kind of fix the eye and touch it up in a later step. Let that red dry. I did another outline line on the left part of the frog between his limb and his belly area. And next we're going to add some yellow texture. So we did the white little dots. There are also yellow dots in this so it provides some more color to our frog. And I did yellow texture dots um, in the upper left area, just in the upper left area. I didn't do it all over the place, but just under his green and um, the top part of his white area. Um, as I'm loading my brush in the yellow, my intention was just to grab yellow, but it it was grabbing red too because there's red in my yellow on the palette. So I, that, that was okay. So if you like the look of the red and the yellow little dots, you can, um, or you can just do just yellow. So I'm just dotting texture in this area, adds more color and interest to our really colorful tree frog. I'm not doing it all over, just in the upper left area. If you feel like you want yellow dots kind of in other places, you can, but I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to move along to other parts of this painting, starting with the curved, twisty tree limb that our frog is sitting on. And I used bronze for this painting. I don't get to use bronze often in my paintings, um, but this one provided a really lovely sort of metallic style to this, and it actually turned out quite lovely. So load your palette with bronze and Mars black and titanium white. So we'll be using those three colors for our tree, tree limb. I started by outlining the top part of the tree limb with the bronze and I'm doing curvy strokes. So this is a twisty branch and I'm just kind of dragging my curved strokes down towards the middle area. It's a twisty branch so I want to make sure my strokes are going kind of in a twisty direction. So down here at the bottom I did the curved strokes but they're kind of overlapping some of the strokes that I did at the top. And grab your Mars Black to help blend this in. So you don't want a lot of that black, just a teeny bit. Black will take over super fast. We're just letting that bronze and black blend together and we're making our strokes go kind of in a twisted direction. So I'm overlapping a lot of my strokes going around the toes. So you just want to be careful in the toe reason, region. We don't want to paint over any of the toes. We may need to kind of outline around those circle tips of the toes and then we can paint the rest of our twisty branch. So twist your strokes, you kind of like curvy sort of X crisscross strokes um, and that black and bronze blend gently together but they don't over blend. So right here in this area, I'm just going to kind of like paint around what I need to paint around. I can grab my black and go in and just kind of fill that in. The nice thing about this is because it's a dark background, we don't need to worry about any uh, canvas still showing through because if any of that black canvas is still showing through, that's okay. That's um, providing us some dark shadowy areas that we don't have to paint. So if you have um, especially between the toes, you don't really have to add paint in that area. You can just leave that blank because our canvas is already black. I'm just going to kind of go around the toes a little bit here. So kind of really take your time in that area so that we don't paint over any of our limbs. And then we can make our way to the right part of our tree branch. And again, twisty strokes. Um, it's kind of more darker and shadowy on the bottom and um, some more brighter bronze color at the top. So dragging this down and around 
our toes over here. And then when we get over here, we can use bigger strokes going in a curved direction. We'll curve this one out this way. Big curved strokes that twist and overlap each other. We will be utilizing some titanium white in here, but I haven't grabbed any white yet. Um, so grabbing a little bit of white on the tip of the brush and I want to kind of highlight the top part without losing too much of my pretty bronze color that I have. So uh, you, I did some white on the top part of the twisty pieces. So I'm kind of going back over my strokes with the white. But I'm going to grab more bronze and kind of go over that again to make that more bronze and not so much of a white. Turn a little bit of a grayish color because of that black. Um, if you don't like what this white is doing, you don't have to do that. So that little bit of white on the brush right there. And I'm just going back over some of these twists with the bronze with that little bit of white on my brush as well. Kind of lighten them up, trying to emphasize the twistiness of this branch, just doing kind of cross, crisscross, curvy strokes. Add some more down here below the frog, but generally that area under the frog is kind of dark. You can see a different variety of colors with that bronze, the white, and the black. I'm going to go back mostly on the bottom. Just add a little pop of black at the bottom because the bottom part of our branch is darker. Next, I'm going to go back and work on the frog's eyes, assuming that red is dry. I'm going to work on the eye on the left. So grabbing more of that red, I'm going to apply a second coat of red to this so that it will definitely show up nice and bright. And when that dries, I'll go back and redo the pupil. This one, second coat, the pupil is on the far right side of that eye. And then I'm just going to use a hair dryer to dry this real quick so that, so that I can demonstrate to you what I'm doing with the eyes because we got to do the pupil, but also there's a highlight. There's like two white dot things on the eye. Um, so I'm going to dry this real quick so that I can demonstrate. So I'll use the black paint pen to go back over the pupil. You can also use a little tiny round brush and black paint for this, but the oval piece right here is on the far right side of his eye and then there's a little slither of green that we still see to the right of that so I'm gonna grab my round brush and just do a little green outline very very thin just on the far right part of his eye Brighten that up just a bit so we can see the far right part and then this eye over here we can do the pupil shape so it's kind of um, like an oval that's got the points on the top and the bottom if you if it's too small and you can't really get those points in that's okay so that's the say the sh shape and size of that inner part of the eye the guys the little frog is looking to his left so the eyes don't have to be the same and then we can grab our titanium white ideally you'll want to do this if the black is dry but paint pens dry super fast so I'm going to do this if you did this with paint you may want to dry it really quick or even if you did it with the paint pen you may want to dry it really quick but I'm going to do the highlights so titanium white right there on the tip of the brush there's one dot right there upper left part of the eye in the red area and there's one dot upper left part in the black area same thing with the eye on the right one dot upper left part of the red one dot upper left part of the black so it's a, a highlight two dots kind of going diagonal in both the black and the red areas I'm going to switch to a different brush now because I'm going to paint that big leaf that is over our frog 
And that is a number eight round brush. So it's a larger brush than the one we've been using. It'll be um, helpful to fill up this large area. So I basically dipped my brush in the water, loaded my brush in the dark green and the light green. So double loaded both of those. It's a thin layer, so that's why that water wasn't really dried off the brush before I loaded my paint. And I'm just going to kind of let my colors mix on the canvas. So this part of the leaf right here, I added a little bit of white. It's lighter and it blends down to a darker color. The top part is lighter and I'm just gonna blend this down to get it be a little bit darker in the center of the leaf. So you can see how it kind of created a gradient. Right here, this bottom half of our leaf is going to be mostly dark green. So for this part, as I'm painting it, I'm loading my brush in just the dark green right now, but I still have some of those lighter colors on my brush and that's okay. So I'm just filling in my shape doing contouring strokes, letting those colors sort of blend together. So again, the top part of our leaf, this top half is lighter. Um, I'm going to kind of make, see how I'm making my strokes kind of going curve outwards? It kind of creates that texture of the veins of the leaf. We're not gonna go in and paint all the little lines. We're just gonna let our paint brush strokes go in the direction of those veins. So I'm just kind of dragging my brush kind of curved outwards towards the edge. And then same thing down here, I'm just gonna take that color, that kind of that lighter green that was on my brush and drag it outwards the opposite direction. So we can still see where that leaf divides in half on the, the bottom half of that leaf is darker, top half of the leaf is lighter. Make this go to more of a point. And some darker green right there on the bottom. I'm not going to detail this leaf too much. And then I'm going to do the stem. So just that darker green in there on the stem. Make that stem a little bit thicker. So our stem is thick at the bottom and then it goes thin at the top to the base of the leaf. It extends towards that middle. So there's a middle line that divides that leaf in half. I use that dark green and the tip of my brush to create that thin line. If you need to switch to a smaller round brush to create that line, you can. But all that line is is, a, is that dark green line dividing that leaf in half. And I'm just going to extend some of this darker green down there. Try not to overwork that paint because we created some texture in there in our leaf just by letting those um, colors go in that direction. I'm going to rinse and kind of start my brush over here, over again. So rinse, dry, and grab the white and the light green. Basically, I want to add a highlight to the left part of my stem. So I'm going to go back over my stem again with the lighter green and the left side of our stem is light. I'll grab some green, go back over the middle part. That'll blend that middle part so the stem is a little bit brighter on the left. Then I'm going to take those colors, so just a variation of the light green, the dark green, some white, and I'm going to do my vines. So still using that number eight round brush, painting the vines, letting those greens blend together. So some parts of the vines will be darker, some will be lighter, just depending on how your paints blend together. And the line isn't consistent. So the line is thin in some areas and thick in others. And that all depends on if I'm pressing my brush hard. So if I'm pressing my brush hard, the stroke gets kind of thicker. If I press it lighter, the stroke gets kind of thinner. So I'll just paint over all your vines. You can add more vines and leaves to this painting if you want. You don't have to use the ones that are provided on the traceable. You can kind of do your own thing. And then I'm going to go back to my full round brush and add leaves to these vines. So these are just very basic small leaf shapes. And I'm just going to add them kind of all throughout on both sides of each of the vines. Doing, using the greens and letting those greens kind of blend together. So just forming a basic leaf shape, filling those in solid green.
So not too many leaves, just two to three leaves on each of the vines. You could add more or less if you want. Next, we're going to paint the water. So there's a blue water area under our tree branch that the frog is on top of. So I'm gonna rinse those brushes off, set them to the side, and grab my three quarter inch flat wash brush. I'll be using the phthalo blue, so that dark blue, and titanium white. So go ahead and dip your brush in the water. Kind of tap it dry. So we need the tip of this brush to be um, kind of like gathered together. So using the tip of the brush, load blue and white on the tip of the brush so that you have the edge and you'll be using the edge of that brush, so that tip of the brush to do left and right strokes with the blue and the white to create this water texture. Now we have the black background already. So we want to leave a lot of that black still showing through. Kind of create a horizon line behind your branch so we see some water on the left and the right side of our tree branch. So again, I'm just using the tip of the brush very lightly, letting that brush kind of skid across the canvas. I can use the full width of the brush and kind of turn it on its side and kind of lightly add some blue marks in there and then grab some titanium white go back over and add some lighter strokes. We're just creating the water, leaving a lot of that black background still showing through. I can use the full width of the brush to kind of drag it. I can make the bottom part have like kind of more uh, wavy lines. So all the lines don't have to be perfectly straight, just enough to give us a little bit of water texture down in that area. We have two more things left to paint. So we have some droplets on our leaves and we have little white dots in the background that could be stars or raindrops or whatever we want to interpret that as. So I'm going to go back to my number four round brush and I'm going to do the droplets. So the droplets are blue and white, but I'm going to start with my blue layer first. I mixed blue and white on my palette and with the round brush, I painted a little drop of water that's hanging down from the tip of the leaf and I have two drops of water that are half circle shapes on the top of the leaf. So I just created that shape just painting that in using the tip of that round brush and that's just blue and white mixed together. Then you either need to let this dry or dry it yourself. I'm going to use the blow dryer to dry these two pieces because our next layer is going to be white and I want this to be dry before adding that layer. So dry it, freshen up your titanium white. Now we want to have the outer part of our shape to be white and we want that line to be thinner than the first line that we did. So I'm going to take my round brush, load it in that white, and I'm gonna outline um, kind of the outer part. It does still overlap part of that blue, but we still want the inner part of that shape line to be blue. So I'm loosely outlining the outer part with the white, but leaving that blue still showing through. And I'm gonna do highlight. So two dots of white on the right side of each of those droplets will give it the indication that there's reflection this droplet, I extended that white line kind of up on the leaf to make it look like it's really dripping down off of that leaf. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna add two to three, I'm gonna do three, three little highlights on the top of the leaf. And we are finished with our little droplets. And the last thing we're going to do is just add some fun little dots in the background. So when I originally did this, I thought that they're likely to be stars because it's at night, but we could interpret this differently. Maybe they're raindrops, um, maybe they're little bugs in the background. If you want to paint bug shapes, you're welcome to do that. So you can take this a different creative direction if you want, but just little clusters of dots kind of all throughout the black area. And I feel like it really brings everything together
And that is the final step of this tutorial. Lots of bright colors in this painting. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial of painting a tree frog with me. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.